Welcome to part six in our 10 things you need to know about Infra Inspection Windows uh, webinar series. Um, during this webinar now we're going to sort of discuss how to install, uh, correctly install uh, the Infra window systems from Iris. Now the most commonly asked questions we get asked routinely about Infra Windows are the following. Uh, how do I calculate where to put an infrared window? You know, how many infrared windows would I require? Uh, what can I see for an infrared window? How do I use an infrared window? How do I install an infrared window? We, we hear these all of the time. So now we're going to discuss these in turn during this webinar. So first and foremost, you need to identify the components that you wish to inspect within your panel. Now, traditional infrared sur surveys look at bolted or cable connections or what we class as the weakest connections within within the panel. Um, these are like I say cable connections, bus bar connections, uh, isolator or circuit breaker connections, racking breakers, there's all sorts of things. Um, bus bars or cables do not tend to go in the middle of a cable run or in the middle of a lump of copper bus bar. They tend to go on the ends of the joints where they're bolted connection uh, uh, bolted together and where high resistance connections can form. So this is where we see the failures and this is where when we're looking at um, putting in inspection systems, what we need to concentrate on. Now the pre-installation uh, pre inspections are of primary importance and there are a number of things that you really need to consider. Uh, one of the things we get asked is how close can I put an infrared window or a port or whatever um, to an energized connection. So typically you're bolting these or cutting these into the actual covers. So um, the only dielectric inclusion should be from the bolt or fixings that are on the other side of the window. Um, that being said, we also look at dielectric clearances uh, that are listed in the IEEE C3720.2 Table 1. And, and you know, if you look at this, a 15 kV uh, panel really should be no closer than uh, minimum clearance should be 8 inches for 20 centimetres. So in a 480 panel, the closest you should really even be thinking about is 5.5 inches. So the panels themselves should be should be further away than that, and you should be okay. But these are these are important to consider. Another thing we're looking at is obviously safety first. You know, you'll need you should isolate uh, your switch gear to allow safe access to the internal components before you do this inspection. Um, the inspection will allow you to identify the components you wish to examine inside the panel and allow you to take any relevant measurements required to complete the calculations for the field of view, which we covered in the uh, webinar five of this of this, uh, this sessions we're going through. Now, an important footnote to remember is you may need to install IR windows in the front, rear, or sides of the switch gear, so that you know you're looking at complete measurements. If you shut down, you should also use this, this uh, um, sort of time to standardize the emissivity um, using IRD labels, paint, tape. Again, we went through the emissivity uh, requirements in part three of this series. So again, if, you, if you're unsure, go back and have a look at part three. That will show you what we need to consider on the uh, emissivity, but use this, use this time to standardize the emissivity. Also, take as many high quality digital pictures as possible, as these can be used for your report templates and any future reference. Um, and if you do not power down for the inspection, which sometimes, you know, in fact, now, nowadays, the vast majority of times, we don't get a chance to do a pre shutdown for an inspection. So we start to uh, either contact manufacturers or look at your old inspections, um, any drawings you might have, um, there's a, you know, tribal knowledge, etc. You know, we can go back and look at all of that to try and gauge what we need to do for uh, the infrared window installs. So sort of a guesstimation, I suppose, is, what, is, a, is a terminology you hear a lot. But typically, um, if you've got redundancy, you can use some of those redundant panels to close those down, use those as a, a gauge or a benchmark for you for the similar panels that you have within your, within your setup. So how many infra windows do you need? Once you've identified those components and you've completed your field of view calculations in line with, with, with session five of this series, you'll be able to correctly identify the number of IR windows you require. Don't, 
fall into the habit of just installing the largest window that you can get or, or, or not taking the time to calculate. Take the time to calculate, it will save you a considerable amount of money. And you can then start to see, you know, do we need multiple round windows or a large format window? I mean, looking at those images on the right again, you know, you're looking at 12 round windows versus two large format windows. So take the time to calculate, take the time to identify the components because, you know, then you can get your whole program completed within the budget that you have. Now, another area you may want to consider is custom engineering for window solutions. Only Iris really can offer these. Um, and a significant return by building custom panels, especially if you don't want to be cutting and grinding and painting and labeling, etc. These systems can be sent to you in one piece. Looking at this, this graphic here, you can see that we would take the standard cover, replicate it, build in an infrared window system, and then all you do is bolt the panel straight on. Very quick, very simple, extraordinarily efficient, and very cost effective because the installation charges are minimal. We have all sorts of custom infra windows. I mean, you look here, we've got bus bar covers, you know, EMV, you know, windows with partial discharge systems and, si systems and sensors built into it, clear windows for, for plexiglass, quick fix series, you know, we've got panel ball covers and again the, the Cat V series custom panels. There's a whole bunch of stuff available to you and if you're going to be looking at this, this is something you might want to consider as part of your installation plan. Installation instructions are available um, on our website www.iris.com backslash installation hyphen support. You can download all of the installation plans from PACS for CAP series and BP series units. Um, alternatively, you can always email us at iris.com for direct support from our in-house team and we're more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Now, installation tools and equipment. You, know, you need to be prepared to have all of the right PPE tools, power, lighting that you require to complete your installation. Remember power, because if you're doing a, a, a dead install, you know, de-energized installation, where are you going to get your lighting from if you're three floors down? So, you know, if you need power, you need batteries, etc. other tools you might want to require. Um, extension cords, saw horses or carts, these will really save you working on the floor bending over. Nice and easy to use and you can move your equipment around quite easily. Some panels get very heavy. Cooler screw guns, magnetic hexagon bits for, to remove covers, magnetic bolts to hold the screws, really useful really useful small magnet pens or large magnets whatever you want to use for cleaning up the shavings you do not want metal shavings in or around the panel we tend to remove the panels go to what we call a dirty area outside of the switch room where we do all of our cutting and grinding etc and then we come back in and we keep the room nice and clean um, rags and simple green, simple green and cordless vacuum cleaners or cleaning equipment. Remember, while you're shutting down, this part of your maintenance should be done. So if you need to be doing your clean up and your housekeeping and, and checking everything out, use this time to do all of this. Now you must remember that the installations are normally completed during shutdowns with limited time availability and you may not be able to get the tools you need at 2 a.m. from a local convenience store. If you need one drill bit, take six. If you need one grinding wheel, take six. Have them with you, have the spares, because you, you know, this time is precious, as you, as you well know if you work within this industry. Now, another thing I get, what can I see for an infrared window? Now, an infrared window allows you to inspect inside the electrical cabinets to check the physical condition of the components within there. Now, with traditional thermographic inspections, we only see temperature differences very clearly. However, you know, if you're surveying components that are at equilibrium with very little load and all at the same temperature, you really ain't going to see much. Yeah, and I, you know, I get this. So again. You know, if you look at these images here, no faults on these very small temperature differentials. Um, you know, a, a skill thermographer doesn't have a problem with this. They can thermally tune the image, have very small spans, and, and see very small anomalies. But that comes with experience. If you're an inexperienced thermographer, trying to find a problem for a window when the things are at equilibrium, well, trying to find if there's a problem or not, should we say, um, is, is not that difficult. Because really, one thing you need to consider is, that if there is some load on the window, 
that you're going to see a problem. So you must have the confidence in the infrared window systems that you're using. Yeah, they're designed to allow infrared energy to transmit through them at a known transmission rate. Therefore, even a slight temperature difference is going to show. And if you look at these images here, some of these can look quite scary, but there are no actual faults on these. It's just a little bit of load, temperature differential of 4 or 5 degrees Celsius, and, and you'll start to see things. So again, we're talking about physics here, infrared energy does transmit through lenses. Now, if you're using crystal lenses um, and they look cloudy and everything else, there are some considerations there that you might want to be careful or be mindful of. But if you're using the iris polymer lens systems, these things do not degrade. If you don't see a problem, that means it isn't a problem. So how do I use an infrared window? Now, an important thing to remember about infrared windows is the identification of the window system itself should have a unique number. This will be invaluable, especially when you have multiple windows on, on multiple electrical panels. The most essential data to record is the transmission rate from the infrared lens, as well also the emissivity of the components or components you want to look behind the windows. As discussed earlier, the most effective way of using an infrared window is to prepare all the components that are inspected um, and they have the same emissivity with electrical tape, etc. Because this is, you know, it's about that keep it simple, stupid, making sure that everything is as easy as possible. Knowing the methodology, uh, this method ensures that all the components are inspected will have the known transmission rate of the window, known emissivity, and consequently the results gathered through these inspections will be far more accurate. So labelling is very important. Um, you know, we tend to use the clock face method because you can look through one window and it can have multiple targets. So if you look at this VPT system, the VP comes with instructions for use. Put them on there because the guys who are using them may not know how to open and close an infrared window. So you need to make sure that that's done properly. And here we have a written label where you can see that they've got uh, things such as the, the location, the infrared window number, the, the polymer material, short wave and long wave or mid wave transmission, uh, bus bar connections, here it says at 3 o'clock with an MCB at 0.95, at 8 o'clock with an MCB at 0.95. So I could come up to this window, open it up, now I've got two connections I have to look at, know what my MCB is for my settings on my camera, and I'll take those images. Okay, so it, it just keeps that level of control on there. Now, what the latest innovations that we actually have at Iris is called eCentric Connect, which is intelligent asset tracking techs. Now, these, what eCentric Connect does, it's an intuitive IR window information tagging system. Um, and it's fitted to the latest range of our CAP series um, and our custom series. And these tags uh, allow operators instant access to all the critical data relating to the electrical equipment and infrared inspections um, through a free Iris, Iris Android based app. Now, eCentric Connect uses uh, a, th a thing called Near Field Communication, NFC. And these devices are really based off a uh, mature contactless smart card technology. You look at the benefits of an eCentric Connect, it's low cost. Readers are built into your Android smartphones. Um, there's an ease of use. You simply, simply touch the tag. Um, very simple, if you like opening a hotel room or if those of you might use Apple Pay or things like that, you literally touch the tag. Um, it's low technology risk because contactless smart card technology is proven and mature. Uh, low implementation cost, obviously the zero cost for the implementation if you're buying Cap Series Windows and using their free app. Um, and it does simplify operations extensively. So how it works, the system uses the principle of inductive coupling to transfer information between the tag and the device reading the tag. Yeah, and it, the NFC device powers the operation of the tag, so there are no batteries required for the, the tags themselves. It gets its powered as soon as you touch the tag. Um, and the NFC tag contains the memory required to store the asset information and inspection data that can be erased and rewritten as, you, as, as required. Yeah, the eCentric Connect tagging system has been designed to be operated on two platforms. It's a standalone or site-based only system or a sub subscription-based cloud-based system which allows you to actually view historical data um, and back that up and it enables you to complete uh, access to the current status of all the assets utilizing eCentric Connect tags. Um, if we look at that in a bit more detail, the site-based standalone system is accessible, as we say, from all Android NFC compatible devices. 
provides inspectors with important equipment data. So I, when I open the tag, it tells me what's there, what my targets, the emissivity, um, uh, any any notes, etc. Um, it automatically saves the time and date of the end the user information. So when you open the tag, it digitally imprints that 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 tag tagging operation to the person who opened it and the time and date. It records and saves all of the inspection parameters. So I can actually open this tag, look at the last inspection date and go, okay, it was at 82 Fahrenheit and there was a warm connection on, on phase two or whatever. Whatever I put in there, I can then re relay that to the next inspector or whoever reads that tag. So that really does save me a, a whole bunch of problems um, because I can do in instant um, uh, analysis of a problem because I've got the historical data to hand immediately. Now if you use a cloud-based system this enables you to do a whole bunch of other things. It enables you to to build and assign inspection routes to inspectors, um, to be able to send and receive inspection notifications, uh, designate and manage users, uh, trigger and record all alarm conditions, um, generate custom reports, uh, review and analyze inspection temperature trends, um, so a whole bunch of stuff on there and then you know if you're in an area obviously where you have no connection to the cloud there's automatic data caching in areas of poor communication so your, your NFC device will store the data and the minute you get connectivity it will upload all of that data to the cloud and enable anybody that's uh, able to view that information um, in an administrative uh, area can see that data and do something with it immediately. So again there's a lot more uh, data regarding eCentury Connect on our website um, but again this is really just from an information standpoint these are also available to buy separately as tagging systems for, for other Windows systems other than the cap or customs and um, but if you get a cap or custom unit these windows these windows will come with the eCentury Connect tag as standard. So in summary do your homework check all applicable certifications and ratings on the panels that you're working on Gather as much information as possible whilst your equipment is de-energized. Again, the measurements, etc. You're only going to get a chance, one chance to make that, you know. So take high-quality digital pictures, standardize your emissivity, take detailed measurements, and note any internal obstacles either on the door, if you've got reinforcing on the door, or cables running where you need windows, uh, or in the middle of your field of view. You need to make note of this because this will dictate where you put the window or what size of window you may require. And conduct any outstanding maintenance tasks. Again, you know, those of you that do this for a living, uh, that's a gimme. Complete a thorough risk assessment and method statement prior to the job. Again, even if you're doing it de-energized, there are risks associated with any work that we may do in the industrial uh, arena. Plus, you, know, you should have a method statement on how, how and what's going to be done for the teams that are doing the, the installations for you. Um, and label or tag your inspection windows and conduct benchmark inspections at the end of the installation. So again, when your, window, when you, when your panels are turned on, go back with a camera, have a look inside there, use your infrared windows you've, you, with the standardized emissivity and the transmission rate known. You can get a great benchmark inspection. If you're using the eCentury tags, upload all of that information. So now we start to build history and anybody that's coming up will really, you get a really good job, a really clean, safe and effective job. And if you, if you can, attend specialized training programs dealing with infrared window installation. At Iris here, we do specialized courses on electrical safety and infrared window installation. And they're even combined with uh, level one and level two infrared training courses as well. So if you want more information on that, you can let us know. So thank you once again for attending this uh, webinar within the 10 things you need to know about infrared windows uh, series. If you need any more information on any of the things I've gone over, you can contact us uh, info at iris.com or visit our website at www.iris.com. So once again, thank you for attending uh, and stay safe.